Hello and a welcome back to uh, an eastery fried kooky corner. <laughs> uh, I thought I would share with you um, uh, an idea that I've been um, working on this past week and I have a lot of um, fabrics um, that I have collected over the years. <laughs> Again, another collection. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm an addict <laughs> to um, material and art supplies and books and everything else. But yes, these are little scraps of fabric that I had left over, like um, maybe fat quarters, even smaller than that, sometimes little charm pieces. And what I thought was that we could make some of these little fabric eggs. Um, they look rather nice in this basket displayed together. So you could have them as a display in the basket. Uh, they could also be useful if you put um, some weighted shot in them. They could be like pattern weights. I know a lot of people uh, don't use pins to pin their patterns to their fabric. They actually use weighted, um, weighted weights. <laughs> weighted weights. Um, so little weights that they can put on their pattern piece so they can cut around it. Um, so these could also be that. They could also uh, be pin cushions. Uh, but I just quite like looking at them in this basket. You could juggle with them if you wanted to. <laughs> but yeah, so just they are little fabric eggs made from scraps of fabric. And um, you could do plain ones if you really wanted to. You could do a mix of um, pattern fabrics and plain fabrics, or you could just go wild like I did and have four different fabrics within your egg. Uh, I've done a selection because I had a whole heap of fabric. I'll just show you the fabric that I have been working with. Grab my box of tricks. <laughs> And these are all the fabrics that I used for mine. Uh, so it's quite a few different ones. So in each of these you'll find I've got um, that one's there. So what I did was I, I got myself a little template and drew it up and um, then cut out lots of pieces from these fabrics in order to put together. Now there are two ways that you can do this. Um, you can, um, if you have a sewing machine, you'll be able to knock these up in no time. I must admit I did some of these with the sewing machine because I wanted to get the uh, tutorial up for you. Uh, the first one I did, I did by hand. So they are easy to do by hand. Um, because they're small, they don't take a long time to put together. Uh, and as long as you're accurate with your pieces, then you should have no problem with that. But if you want to whip up a whole load of them, maybe you want to give some as gifts at Easter time. Instead of chocolate, if you've got people who are not um, indulging in the chocolatey side of Easter and would like something else, or if you want a little basket just to display, I mean, I'm going to put a little bow and things on these, which I'll probably pop into my thumbnail so that you can see what it looks like when it's all dressed up. Um, but yes, so all you need to start off with is a little pattern template. Now I am going to put this um, in the description so that you can go and grab it if you want to do that. But if you can draw your own, you know, you go for it. You can also, with the pattern template, if you want to make some bigger ones, you could um, just enlarge this. And, and make some bigger ones if you wanted to. You could make them into doorstops if you wanted to weight them down that much so that they could be doorstops. So that's another thing that you could do. Obviously you need more fabric for that, but if that's something that appeals to you, then um, just another option. So what I did with this, you need four of these. So I'm gonna write that on there times four. You need four of these for each of your eggs. Um, so four pieces of fabric in order to make your egg. Let me tilt my screen now so that you can see a little bit. I've got the sun coming through my window, so it's, it's kind of casting a bit of a strange shadow, but do bear with me. Bear with people. I'll move over. Let me move that basket out of the way for the moment. 
clearing my desk of all the little bits. Okay, so here in my little clip, I've got four of the fabrics that I'm going to use. These are all cut out. You can iron them if you would like to. I, I'm so lazy. I didn't. I didn't bother. But you can if you want to. Um, if you want to make it more accurate. But they're such small pieces. You don't really need to worry too much. Um, when you're putting these together, because I do them in pairs to start off with, so you have to consider how you would like them to sit together on your egg, basically. Um, so that's one thing you might want to consider if you're using two different fabrics and then you might want to alternate where the fabrics go so you don't have two together and you have two separate ones if you see what i mean i obviously i like to go for the, <laughs> the ultimate amount of fabrics i can have in one thing so i've got four different fabrics so it really doesn't matter which way these go so i'm going to grab my needle and thread and i'm going to show you what i do to put them together so for this you'll need your materials obviously um, you might need some clips or pins I use clips because I just find those easier uh, I have my handy dandy uh, Madeira magic pen which I drew around my template onto the fabrics so that's well, something else you will need and you will also need some um, polyfiber stuffing or toy filling to stuff your eggs with um so to speak so what i'm going to do now i'm going to load up my needle and i'll show you basically how to put them together it's really 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 simple you could do it with children if they're old enough to hold a needle and you could show them how to do this as i say you could do it with your sewing machine if you so wish and knock out a whole load of eggs <laughs> in no time at all uh, so let's get to it okay so here I am with my needle, which I have already pre-threaded. I've got some nice green cotton. It's nice, fresh green. Uh, obviously, you can pick out any of the colours that you've got in your um, fabrics as some kind of a, a thread to work with. And it won't really be seen because you're going to be turning them inside out. So I'm going to start with this one because this is going to be one piece make sure you've got the pointy sides one slightly more pointy than the other if you look on the template you can see that's a pointy end there so that's the bit that goes at the top and that's the bottom piece um, so what you want to do is to put right sides together and we are going to just sew down at that edge there so we're going to sew from the top to the bottom and stop. Then you will do the same with your other two pieces. Sew down from the top and to the bottom and stop. Um, I'm doing just a simple back stitch with this. I could do bottom to top, whichever way, if you're left handed or right handed, it just depends. And I am literally just going to start here and then quite small stitches because we're going to be stuffing this with quite firmly with some poly uh, polyester filling um, so you don't want the stitches to be coming apart so fairly small stitches just do a quick back stitch you're basically going back to the stitch you just made and then in front of the stitch there and you go back and in front so it's kind of kind of one step forward <laughs> two steps back <laughs> describes my life <laughs> uh, I'm joking obviously um, so yeah just a simple back stitch all the way down to the bottom and do that on both of your pairs of fabric so just the one edge okay and then come back and I'll show you what we do next I was also going to say, if you want to be super, super careful and you want to teach children the correct way to put things together, then either pin them or clip them together, or you could tack stitch them if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going rogue here. <laughs> I'm going rogue. 
so that I can quickly show you how to do this. But obviously, if you are doing this with children and you want to show them how to do it completely properly, <laughs> and also just give them some confidence that the pieces are not going to slide and slip away from each other, then obviously pin or clip or tack. Another thing I forgot to say is um, it's going to be like a quarter of an inch or half a centimetre allowance. So your seam's going to be about that much. Um, you can see these come together really quickly, depending on how fast a sewer you are. And it's something that if you want to do it, by hand you can just take these out with you they're small enough to take out as a little project or so if you're on the train journey or something and you want to just have something to occupy you when i get to the end um, i just turn it over and go in with a needle wrap my thread around a couple of times pull it through and you've got a knot nice pair of sharp scissors and snip that off. So I'm going to go and do the other little pair here and I'll be back to show you what we do with it then. Okay so I've stitched both of my pairs together and now we're going to put the two pairs together to join them. Now I'm just making sure I've got the top at the right place. Obviously again it's going to be right sides together I am going to use clips for this as well. So I'm clipping the top end. And I'm going to clip the side. Okay, I've got my edges together. You can correct this as you go, um, obviously. Bottom, making sure the seams from both sides are matching up. Clip at the bottom there. And then around to the side and a clip there. So these just these are just handy uh, clips that will hold things together. You could do the same thing with a pin. I just find these, especially if you're doing this with children, these are not going to poke you <laughs> and stab into you and they're quite handy. I think they're quilting clips. I think people use them for quilting clips, but I use them for all of my sewing. And again, with your green thread or whatever thread you have, get yourself a length of that. And then you're going to sew all the way around your uh, egg shapes, um, but you're going to leave yourself about an inch and a half gap because we need to turn it the right way around and then um, stuff it. <laughs> so starting, uh, actually do I want to start there? Probably not. I'll start here. So I'm going to start from this place here so that I can get to the bottom there and I've got enough to turn my fabric to the right side. Again, it's just back stitch all the way around. Nice, neat little back stitches so that it's very firmly held together. If you want to be super secure, you could double your thread up. And then stitch all the way around. So I've started uh, part way down one of the sides and I'm going to stitch right through to the bottom bit there and that gap there is the bit that I'm going to use to turn it but I won't turn it until I come back so if you want to pause here go and stitch around and then come back to me and I will um, show you what we need to do yet next which is really very simple but it's nice for you to be able to see the whole process okay so I'm back I've sewn my two pieces together and remembered to leave my inch and a half gap where the stuffing is going to go. But before we do that, what I'd like you to do is to take your scissors. Now this is going to be very carefully so you don't go up to the stitch, you just clip the curves. This will help 
when you turn it inside out because it helps it to move into its shape so just every two centimeters or something on each of the little seam lines obviously don't snip through your stitches just the tip of your scissors just a clip so that you can curve around that's not a big job it's a little extra thing but that little extra thing makes a difference when you turn it the right way around i'm just going to clip these edges on the bit i'm not completely sewn just so it will turn as well okay so having clipped your curves of which there are many on an egg <laughs> um, find your hole and you're going to turn it inside out now, if you want to, you could use a chopstick or a piece of dowel to help you do this to get all the edges out. Push that corner out. This will look more eggy <laughs> once it's got its filling in, and we're going to firmly stuff it. So it's going to be stuffed quite firmly with the with the poly polyester filling, toy filling, whatever it is you want to use. You could use sheep's wool if you wanted to, if you'd like to do that. Well, I have both, but I have got my poly polyester filling on hand to do this with, and this is what I did the other ones with. So that's all turned inside out now, and the next thing I need to do is to stuff it. Okay, so I've got my floof here. Find a hole, get some floof, and stuff it in. It's as simple as that. So you want to be stuffing this so that it's quite firm. So you need to be pushing it down. If you're finding that difficult, just grab the end of your dowel, not the pointy end, but, and just give it a push to make sure all that stuffing's getting in there and it's nicely dispersed. Don't try and push too much in at once, otherwise um, it may not get into all the little nooks and crannies. Um, there are not that many nooks and crannies to be fair on an egg but <laughs> just keep going until it's kind of firm and you've got no crinkles in your fabric that's basically what you're wanting and and it takes on more of an an eggy shape so come back to me in a moment pause the video and then come back and i'll show you how i finish off that little gap okay so i'm just putting the last pieces of stuffing into mine it takes more than you think once that polyester filling is squished down it does take quite a bit to to make sure that it's completely properly firmly stuffed i am getting there so you want it so that you can you can see a few little wrinkles there so just keep going until all of those just maneuver your, fab your fiber inside so that you've got a little extra room and push it up into the bits where you need it to fill out like that's all filled out now and i just need to add in my last bit of stuffing and we're there so now we need to close up this gap now the best way to close up a gap from the outside without showing too much of your stitching is with a ladder stitch the ladder stitch is really quite simple make sure you've got that little edge you know we have that quarter of an inch sewing allowance um, i'm gonna i've got a knot in the end of my thread and i'm going to take it in from the inside coming to the outside of my egg and to finish it up the ladder stitch we take a little bit and come in a bit closer and come down to here so you can see so we take a little bit from one side do a stitch in it 
and then we take a little bit from the other side and do a stitch and literally that's all you do you're making like a ladder that's like the name of the stitch going from one side to the other so each of the stitches is like a rung in your ladder and make sure you've got that little bit of seam allowance still on your egg and as you put it together it tightens up can you see that and by the end of this if you didn't know where you'd stitched it together then people probably wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> just a little bit from each side and put it together it's a very handy stitch to use if, especially if you're making um, stuffed toys or things this is this is the go-to um, when I make my fabric bears obviously there's going to be lots of places that need to be then stuffed and um, and finished up and this is my finishing up stitch and just pull it together and can you see the stitches kind of disappear into the inside which is what we're wanting I might have to fiddle around a little bit with the end bit it's always the most tricky bit just doing the ending um, could just persevere with it oops I'm trying to stitch my dowel in go away dowel don't need you anymore and last couple of stitches so my ladder is complete so there we have our thing and you just can squoosh around the, fi the fiber inside just to make sure it's all shaping out nicely and that one worked really well so I'm going to finish this off so how I finish it off is I make myself another little stitch wrap around a couple of times to finish off with a knot and then I'll take that inside the fabric and lose it and then put it and snip and that goes back inside and there you have your finished egg nice little um, fabric -y egg with no calories that you can uh, use as a pin cushion as I said you could put some shot in it and use it as a weight you could make it bigger make it into a doorstop lots of different things that you can do and I'm going to add this to my basket so let's bring that back in Ooh, it's quite close to you <laughs> let me move it back up again there we go so we have my basket of eggs and I can add in my last egg. There they are. Little eggy treats that you can keep for years or give away as gifts. I hope you enjoy this. As I say, the, the, the little pattern that I use, I will put down in the description so you can go ahead and grab that if you want it obviously if you think you can just draw your own up do it you know just go for it have a go uh, but that one's there if you would like to use it have a great day and the, the lovely rest of your week and I will be back at some point soon with uh, more goodness for us to work to together um, or work on together don't forget if you like this video to like and subscribe to me if you want to see all the other things that we're going to be making uh, I've got a lot of plans in mind for things to do so yeah like subscribe and if you want to know when I've uploaded then click the bell and that will tell you when I am uploading a new video have a great day and take care bye bye